Also, layouts and constraints are essential part of responsive design inside of Figma. In this tutorial, you will learn what auto layouts are and how you can apply constraint inside of your design to come out with a perfect responsive design that adapts to all screens. And if you need this file, you can download it from the description of this video. All right, so let's take for instance, we have three shapes created here, which are shapes of different sizes. So you can, to add auto layouts to anything you're working on, you right click on it and then you come down to add auto layout. Or if you have multiple that you want to add an auto layout at once, you can select it, right click and you click on add auto layout. In as much as there's a shortcut to add auto layout, which is shift A, so shift A at auto layout to your design. Now auto layout can be used to create multiple things and it definitely helps you to do responsive design of which I would actually show you here. So auto layout is just the same like grids and flex inside of web design, whereby here you can actually control how you want the alignment or the layout to kind of look like. So you can change it from here. So you have something like this auto layout will flex to the vertical. And if you want it to flex horizontally, you could definitely click here to flex to horizontal. And then there's one additional feature here, which is the wrap. So the wrap actually does, okay, this is what the wrap does. So when the wrap is here, it calculates the distances of these shapes inside of it here plus the spaces between them and it adds them up. So if provided the distance of this particular frame is smaller than all the distances of the guys, of the shapes and the spaces added together, it pushes the other frame downward. And this particular feature here have other multiple features here provided you can choose how you're wrapping, how it goes. So for instance, this one here, it wraps everything to the top and to the center. This other one here wraps everything to the top and to the left. This one here wraps everything to the right, but not at the center, but at the middle of your design. So most of them you can iterate with most of them to understand how they are being made and how you can actually use this to come up with something that actually looks perfect. Now, aside from wrapping features here, there are other features of auto layouts that are actually great to try. Now, let me increase back the size to how it was here. And with auto layouts, you can actually control the distances between your objects or between the elements inside of your design. For instance, in here, I can control the spacing between them. Changing it from 18 pixels, I can put it maybe at 32 pixels and you can see the spaces from here do increase. And when it discovers that the distances or their width and spaces are combined, it's no longer fitting it actually wraps the next item to the next line so that's basically it there's also a feature here over here it is the padding so it's padding from left and right and when you kind of put a value here for instance 32 here it adds some padding over here of 32 pixels you can see and also over here you have a padding of 32 pixels in as much as you can do this same on the top so over here i can also put 32 pixels on the top so over here you discover that there is a padding on the top of 32 pixels and padding on the bottom of 32 pixels there are many things you can actually do with auto flows let's start with a button so before we know that the primary style of creating a button was maybe to draw a shape like this take some text and it over here and you say click me for instance and here you can change this color maybe let me say to a little bit black and we can change the font size all right so let's allow the font size like that i group this and then i just arrange this this way and then we have a button but with auto layout you can create buttons that actually resonate so much more so here i'll be creating a button with the help of auto layout so i click on this text i click on my mod board i'll just kind of create a button for instance click me and this is it now when you're done like typing your text you click outside now i just want to change this to 14 pixels i love my button text to be 14 pixels so what i'll do here is i'll press shift a or right click and click add auto layout so over here i've added an auto layout to this the next thing i'll do is i can control the distances from the left and the right for instance if i want that this should be 16 pixels on the left and right 16 pixels and 10 pixels on the top i'll have something like this now the next thing i'll do is to change the text 
color so maybe i wanted something white and then for the background i'll come over here i'll click here to add a fill color you can see it adds a fill and here i can choose a color that actually resonates to me so something like this maybe if you want to add some border radius let's say six pixels we have something like this and we have successfully created a button and one thing that is good from this particular button and the other type of traditional way of creating buttons is that actually here the button is kind of responsive so if i kind of duplicate this and i want to change the content inside of it maybe this is not a click me button it's a sign up button you see this the width of the button actually it is kind of responsive enough to the content inside of it so if i say sign up you see it maintains the same distancing between the left and right and also the top and bottom so that is how you can use auto flows to create responsive items so this is just a button for instance so there are other ways of which you can actually use them to create responsive items and another one is this so this is uh let's say an apple product card so in this apple product card here we have an image we have some heading we have some text description we have button to buy and a button to view more now if i want to bring in an item here since this is a responsive design for instance if i drew something like this and i kind of carry it and i want to add here you see all right so let me just reduce it down if i bring this and i want to add here you see it adds here it cannot kind of like stick on the top meaning that you cannot place an element above it all right so let's think about the traditional way of kind of let me say you design something like this and then you want to add another item maybe in the middle or somewhere and then whenever you want to bring it like this it needs that maybe you place it maybe somewhere here you select this uh, text beneath here and this other one this button and this you kind of shift it down like this and then you kind of position the element you want to add here like this then you come over here you select this you increase the height and then you start measuring the distances so this kind of sucks and this is where auto layouts actually comes in and helps us so so in auto layouts let me just get rid of this with auto layout if you're bringing in an item over here for instance like this you can actually choose where to fit it so as i'm moving in you can see there's a blue line that actually shows me where can i fit this particular thing and where you want to fit it you can just drop it in now how can you create this kind of nice looking design for instance let me get rid of this and then we we'll have just this three so the first thing is you have to look for your image so let me just say you have your image you have some text like let me say your heading text you had some other paragraph text over here and as you can see i've made it also to be an auto layout such that it should be responsive i have a button also that's an auto layout so something like this so i have this so the first thing is the way we created the button up as an auto layout is still the exact same way we are going to create this button that is it is the exact same way I created this button as an auto layout and when you look at this button here it has three items or oh, sorry two items or oh, three items and these three items here is as a result of the button is an auto layout and when you're adding content to it you can choose how it is being aligned here or the layout from here and then it appears that way if i choose it this way you discover that the button is down but if i choose it this way it is this way so that's what auto layout actually helps you to do so now the first thing you want to do is when you have your image you have your h1 h your paragraph your two buttons which might be frames all you need to do is to select this shift a to create auto layout or you right click and create your auto layout the next thing is you want to make sure that the spacing between them maybe is significant you can choose 24 pixels and you have something like this now over here this is what we have but uh, I think the spacing here shouldn't be 24. So we'll take it down to 16. So I'll select the frame and then I take the spacing down to 16 pixels. We have something like this. Now the next thing I want to do is to give it padding. So one padding from the left and right to be 16. And top and bottom also should be 16. So we'll have something like this. Now the next thing I want to do is to give it a stroke. So if I click on stroke here, I can give this a stroke 
and if i choose the stroke color here i can go with this white here and i have my stroke color from there i can just scroll down here and i give this uh, border radius of maybe let's say six pixels and we have okay let's just take it out to 12 pixels and we have something similar so you look it is kind of similar but now there's one particular problem here if you can actually see there is something here this hot as you can see so i'll just kind of drag this but if you want to copy it you just create an auto layout you give it a border radius of about 100 pixels and above so it will make it round so now how can i add this here without it just entering maybe in some space like that so the next what you want to do is when you want to place an item over an auto layout what you do is you select this and then you come over here where, where you have this x y you click over here and then it will make when you click over here it makes that particular content to be absolute to the frame and then you place it where you want so as you can see we have easily created this guy here that is kind of cool so this is how auto layouts can help you to create cut elements such as these now let's talk about how to use constraints to create designs that are mobile responsive so the first thing about this that you have to understand is the constraint so when you click on a single element inside of your frame so an element inside of the frame that's one thing you have to put in mind so you look on your right you see where we have constraints so over here we have constraints when you look at this particular constraint the constraint have is have been set to left top in that whatever thing you are doing with this screen it will forever remain on the left and over the top so that's one thing so when you're setting your constraints you just basically have to understand how the elements should adapt to the different screens then you can set them that way now for this one here if i click here you can see these are single single elements but now for you to be able to kind of control them when the screen is kind of shrinking it totally depends on you so for instance if i select this if i select all of these elements and i make them to be an auto layout for instance not just grouping because i want to control the spacing between them and i say the spacing between them could be 40 pixels all right so if i put them to be at the center something like this and then if you look over here over here you have constraints now how can you set these constraints now we want to set them to be at the center and the top that's what we want and then for this button over here so for the constraints we just want to leave it to be at the right and at the top meaning that whenever you're shrinking your screen down like this you see every element remains at that particular position so when you look at this text here the text here you discover that one thing here is it's kind of just stagnant but you want to actually control the flow when you're kind of reducing the screens and everything so how do you come about this all you have to do you can select all of the content inside of there you create your auto layout shift a when you create the auto layout you can control your spacing if you want so you can take it to 32 you see the spacing between each ele every element when it's an auto layout here if i am shrinking this down like if this is going down you discover that it remains in one position it doesn't change that is simply because we have not given any specific properties to this so the first constraint you want to set it is to center and top for instance so now if we are kind of shrinking this down it remains now at the center but now it doesn't actually looks responsive enough so there's one thing you still have to do so first it is always set set to hud so you can change this first should be an hug you double click on the text here you change it from fixed to fill container so if you actually want the element to scale when you are kind of reducing everything and increasing all you need to do is to come over here to where you have center set it to scale also this one here you can set it to scale meaning that the next time and when you set to scale make sure that this guy here is set to fill container because if you set it to fixed weight it is not code if you set it to hug it appears like this so always you set it to fill container so that it fills the container and then now over here the container is auto layout we've just added and when you're scaling it down sorry when you're kind of shrinking it down you see that everything here is set to scale so this is it 
so you have something like this something like this as you can see guys when you're shrinking it down no matter the screen you have you still have content that kind of looks cool now how do you kind of create now this responsive effect so you just master which which size is the mobile size which one is the tablet size you can always control d that is duplicate this frame then you can change the width over here and when you change the width everything do adapt but one thing that will not actually adapt is this navigation bar because we already know how navigation bars do work there's no way you can automatically change this into a drop down so you always have to do it manually at your manual frame where you click and it opens an overlay and there you have your responsive design all right so thank you guys for watching so far and in this video i hope you have learned a lot and if you want to learn how to create a vertical scroll bar do make sure to watch this video over here to learn how you can create a vertical scroll bar 